What's up, everyone? We are back here on site, on location at Pizza Man Pub on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville, New York, and we are very excited to be here. The Delia family is no stranger to Baldwinsville because of Pizza Man, and so many amazing things have happened inside of this building. Got to talk to uh, Jim Delia and the man who was always around here wearing his Vegas night stuff, and to hear kind of the story and buying it and taking it over and that the sauce has never changed, the recipe hasn't changed, so a lot of cool stuff about Pizza Man Pub. We are here on site on location every single month, and when I say we, I'm talking about Wake Up Call with Dan Satori. You know the logo, you know the show. Every month here with a special, this special is Champions Quarter, which is a tribute to the 2021 national, not regional, not local, not conference, national champion, Lemoyne College Dolphins men's lacrosse team. And Frankie Delia is here with me for our final piece today. You heard from Dan Sheehan, the head coach. You heard from Nate Arnold. And now it's, the, now it's time to hear from Frankie Delia, which is where it all started when you and I talked at that table right there to get this thing set up. So welcome to the show. Hey, Dan. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And you and I have been talking about this for, for a bit, for a few weeks, and we've been excited about it. To finally get to do something like this, what is it? mean to you like you said you've never done something in this situation like out at a restaurant and whatnot so what does it mean to you to be able to have your first time be at a restaurant that is everything about the Delia family yeah um you know it, it's exactly that it's just the fact that I'm able to do it here it's something uh you know it means a lot to me and uh somewhere where I've worked my whole life and been a part of my whole life and everything like that so not only is it just doing it at a restaurant and doing something like this in this format but the fact that it's here at the uh Pizza Man Pub uh, definitely means a lot to very special to me. You know, Dan Sheehan talked about the fact that Jimmy Delia, who is a blessed member of your family, he also played for Dan Sheehan. So what's that like to think of the fact that you and Jimmy both played for Sheehan? Oh, it's awesome. We're always, you know, telling stories. Uh, he's telling me about the Lemoyne days when he was there. I'm telling him stories about, you know, my current days being there. And it's, it's awesome to kind of... Uh, keep that family tradition of Lemoyne going on and uh, it's cool because he wore number eight and then that's why I honor the number eight now uh, so it really is something special that Jimmy played there and uh, yeah it just means a lot to wear his number too so so when you wore number eight and you won and you won a national championship Jimmy was like right there on your back that's right it was like he was right there just on the back on the front in the, in the back of the jersey it was like yeah. uh, Honor to Jimmy Dealey, of course. When you decided to wear number eight, when did you tell Jimmy? Um, immediately. Immediately. Coach said, uh, what number do you got? Or what number do you want? And I said, uh, does anyone have number eight? And this is when I was transferring in. And he said, nope, that's open. And I said, lock it in. Let's go with number eight. I texted Jimmy immediately. And I said, I got number eight, man. Same number. Do you remember what he said to you? I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe he does. But uh, I know he was excited. I know he was excited. Because it, it really is... You know, it really is something special that we got to wear the same number at college. So. Yeah. To play for the same team, to wear the same number, to have the same last name. Not many people can say those things. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. That, that, that's very true. And like I said, once again, it just it means so much. You know, and especially with everything that Jimmy's done for me over the years with, with this place. And, you know, not even working here, but before then, just kind of taking me under his wing and being a good mentor to me growing up and throughout the years. So. How's Jimmy been a good mentor to you? I'm interested. Uh, so when I was young, we used to have uh, a little bromance, we, we used to call it. We, uh, I'd hang out with him. I used to, he used to invite me over to his house all the time and cook me food, him and his uh, amazing wife, Amy. And I got to watch his young, beautiful daughter, Alexa, grow up. And, you know, kind of just was every Sunday watching football and just stuff that I, I never forget. And then, you know, as I got older, he offered me a position here at the pizza shop, so... You know, just, just always kind of been there for me and throughout the whole stages of life, growing up and, and through the high school years, kind of been down there. Who makes a better pizza, you or him? I mean, I got to give it to him. I, I, can't, I can't say I make a better pizza. I mean, it's, he's been doing it since, you know, since birth, pretty much. I mean, wings. I don't know about wings. I make better wings. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love the wings. How are you better at wings? I want to know. What's the secret? just mastery of the winger and just just learn the art of it it's kind of, I, I made me and nikki nikki delia nikki bobby Dirt delia uh, i made perfected the 
golden garlic wing sauce. Uh, so yeah. just Which a lot of people like here. They golden, do. The golden garlic. They do. And that's pioneered by me. Whenever somebody Rick says, what John. sauce do you get when they come here? That's always what any server will say, the golden garlic. Golden garlic, yeah. And like, like I said, that was uh, me, Nikki, and my brother, Joey, kind of coming up with all that. So. Okay. I like that you call him Nikki Bobby, like uh, Ricky Bobby. Yeah, right? that's, that's uh, <laughs> go, Nikki Bobby. Yeah. How did, how did he pull that name? It was it Jimmy? Jimmy's a big nickname. Jimmy's always given nicknames. So. Okay. So All right. Just, Fair enough. I want to know. I want to know if Jimmy's got one for me yet. You know, I don't know. I haven't heard one for you, but I, you know, in his head, I guarantee there probably he's got one is one mine. somewhere. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So, the family's here. You know, as we celebrate today, Champions Corner. A lot of your family members are here. The support is here. You feel it in the building. It's tangible. When you play home and you get to be here you grew up here in central upstate new york you get to play at home in upstate new york you bring a championship back to upstate new york and you get to celebrate it in your family's restaurant in upstate new york what type of emotions go through you that you got to do it all with your family in front of your family and now you get to celebrate it again with your family just fortunate, you know. I, I couldn't be in this position without any of those guys and uh, without the local Syracuse connections, too. I mean, leaning back on family is awesome, you know, texting my mother, or my father to make me a home cooked meal is always nice. And, uh, you know, and then once again with the Syracuse connections, going to OCC. And, and then, fortunately enough, Coach Sheehan recruited me and, and I was able to stay local. It's, it, it's been an amazing experience. And to be around family and close to this place, especially, has been. Uh, really something that I'm very fortunate for. Is this what you wanted all along? Did you always want to stay home? No, no, definitely not. No, I, I wanted to leave. That, that was the plan. But uh, when when you get into it and you get into Lemoyne and you realize how fortunate you are. And I always say this, I never want to change a thing with what I've done and, uh, you know, the, the path that I've taken as far as going to OCC and staying local. But, you know, that definitely at first wasn't the plan. But like I said, it, it's... Uh, something that uh, I'll never want to change in my life. I'm very fortunate for you. Frankie Delia here with us, 2021 national champion with the Lemoyne Dolphins men's across team, myself, Dan Tatora. Wake up call on site, on location. We are here at Pizza Man Pub on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville. And for you and for the whole team, you lost a season. The NCAA said we're gonna make that right. You get to play this season and you win a championship amidst a pandemic. I asked Nate about this. How do you look back on having the game taken away from you, not because of injury, not because of academic ineligibility, not because of anything that, that you had any connection to, but something that was beyond everybody's control. No one's had to live that except for the people that just had to live it. How did you get through it and bring me into the craziness of the NCAA trying to give back the time and, and let you play this year? Well, uh, how I got through it was just one day at a time. You know, when we first got the announcement that we had to leave and couldn't do it, it definitely took a, you know, took a toll on us, uh, all of us. And we really thought we had a shot. You know, I, I transferred in that year, my junior year. And I know the consensus on the team was that we really thought we had a shot that year to make something happen. Uh, so that was tough to have to be sent home. Uh, but yeah, you take it one day through a time at the, during the pandemic and you know that things are going to get better and the fall comes around and, and you know, you, you learn that there is a chance that you'll have a season and then uh, you have a season and it's tough because uh, I'm sure as they've told you, we weren't able to stay in hotels, practice was tough, uh, we didn't have a locker room, all that stuff kind of affected us, you know, weekly testing, all that stuff. But uh, the fact that where it started, uh, you're going home to the fall wasn't, you know, didn't look too promising. Um, so being able to win a national championship uh, just just meant the world to us. And, and we took, uh, you know, regardless if we didn't have a uh, locker room or whatever, it was still very fortunate to be in that position. How do you win a national championship not having a locker room, not being in the hotel, having to be in a bubble, having to lug your equipment back to your room, like having all of these things taken away from you and really no semblance of a normal reality, how do you win a championship in a year that's that crazy? Just grit, just pure grit, just bring it to practice, gritty, uh, gritty men on our team, you know, uh, 
changing outside and, and freezing cold weather just uh, shows how gritty we were and keep working hard and stay motivated and, and uh, achieve the ultimate goal. How do you do it personally? How do you stay motivated yourself? You know, once again, uh, one day at a time. That's how I take things in the season. It's one day at a time, one game at a time. Uh, I tried even throughout the playoff run, conference playoffs and, and uh, you know, the, the NCAA playoffs, just to take it a game at a time. And, uh, you know, I guess that, that is really how you stay motivated. You don't try to think too far ahead. You just, want, you just become gritty and keep working hard. You talk about the one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants things to happen so quickly, especially in today's world. Professionally or personally, people want quickness, right? You watch TV shows about, was it, 90 Day Fiance, where they get married in three months and they're like across across the pond from each other. And so, you know, marriage is quick. Dating is quick. People want to go from sitting on a couch to being a billionaire really quick. How do you take things one day at a time in a society that wants everything to happen? They call it the microwave society. Nothing can be fast enough. Well, uh, I actually uh, I learned this quote from uh, John Wooden. Uh, I learned a lot about him because he's, he's actually uh, somebody I look up to as a leader. Uh, you know, at his years at UCLA, and uh, it was kind of uh, focus on, on running the race and uh, not winning it. Not only do I apply that in life, but uh, I apply it in well, yeah, I apply it not only do I apply it in lacrosse and school and and you know whatnot, but I apply it in life in general. Just really focus on one day at a time running the race and not winning it. And if you focus on that, you know, everything will come into place. Frankie Delia is spreading some knowledge here on Wake Up Call inside of Pizza Man Pub, 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville. Champions Corner celebrating the Lemoyne Dolphins 2021 championship. How would you describe this season in a few words? It was difficult. It was difficult. You know, as I said, uh, we, we didn't have a locker room, COVID was tough, challenging, social aspect completely taken out of everything, especially being an athlete, held to a little bit higher standard. Uh, it was difficult for sure, um, but it was very worthwhile, that's for sure. How did you deal with the bubble that you really saw your teammates, your coaches, and that was it? You couldn't do much of anything, couldn't really have a social life, you weren't supposed to step out of your bubble, which... They're asking you in college to not mingle with the student body. Not an easy thing to do. No, it, it wasn't an easy to, uh, thing to do, but how you dealt with it is, is by going to practice every day with a good attitude and, and being around your best friends every day and, you know, just, just looking forward to that. And when you're there, just, just working hard. You know? that, that's how you get through it, just, just once again, one day at a time. Teams say they're families. Not everybody is. Nate talked about what got him through it is my best friends were there with me. You just said your best friends. Why is this team so close? And what can you say about the culture and the atmosphere of Lemoyne men's across where you didn't feel like being in the bubble, you were away from your friends. You felt like your friends were your team. Your team were your friends. So bring me into that. Um, you know, it, it kind of was just... Uh well, so here's a little story. Uh, when I transferred in, uh, when I first transferred in, it was halfway through the year. Um, it was in January. When I came into the locker room, when I was meeting everybody, you couldn't tell the difference between somebody who was a senior and an all-star compared to somebody who was a uh, freshman and the last guy in the depth chart. You, and I, I swear, you couldn't tell the difference because of the camaraderie that you build, that these guys build with each other. And uh, they brought me right in, right into that camaraderie with those guys. Uh, so... So that's how uh, you know they, they make it easy and, and you become so close with everybody. They, they just there's no egos. Uh, the best player in the team is, is closest friends with the last guy in the depth chart, you know. Um, and then uh, you know it also people will get on you. You know I have a few captains yelling at me. Nate, you know, I remember my first captain. Nate was always uh, harping on me to do better and stuff. But as soon as practice was over, he, he was the first guy to you know give, give me a handshake and tell me I was doing good and stuff. So everyone gets on you a little bit, but. They're always the first people to pick you right back up. So that, that kind of what's creator culture, because you have to work hard, but at the same time, those kids are, are picking you right back up. You said that Nate would be hard on you and then be there for you after. He said that you helped him not worry about it and go to the next play. Speak on that give and take on the team that, you know, you've had your moments where you've told him, he's told you, and I'm, I feel like with this being a, the family that you described, 
there is that give and take where sometimes you feel like you're the guy getting the lesson, and then what Nate said is sometimes you're the one giving the lesson as well. Well, Nate, Nate's a true leader on a, on a team, and uh, not the true leader like the only, but uh, he is a true leader for us, and uh, you know, he definitely has helped me out a lot, being on me and stuff, and then once again picking me right back up. But uh, as far as helping him, you know, the thing with Nate is he's such a phenomenal player. He doesn't really get beat that often in, in practice, in games. He really doesn't. So uh, when it happens, he definitely can get a little flustered, and I'm always the one to say, you know, listen, Nate, like, there's six of us right behind you, you know what I mean? And, and we're all here for each other, so it's not on you. And that's kind of the lesson that I share to him and, and to every other defender on my team. So. Nate said he feels like he played his worst game in the championship. I think that, I think it was a little bit of my fault, not gonna lie. <laughs> I think it was a little bit of my fault. I don't think he played a bad game at all. I think I should have made a few more saves for him. What was it about the second half? I have no idea. I locked into a zone, and I feel like the rest of the team kind of got into the zone, and I have no idea what happened. I, you know what I think it was? It was all the hard work we put in throughout the year, and and. When we got into halftime, we knew we should have been in such a better place. And, and once that second half came around, we all just clicked and, and be, be the best team that we possibly could be in that second half. Clock hits zero. When does it hit you that you're national champions? When does, it, when does that rush actually go through? I looked up with a minute left, and I was in awe because I didn't realize that it was a fourth quarter. I, I seriously had no clue. I was just, I was so caught up in the moment and trying to do the best thing we could. When the ball went down to the other side of the field and I saw all the fans going nuts, I, I took a look at the clock and I said, wow, we have a minute left and we have the ball. And I said, this is it. And that's when it really hit me and all the emotions started playing. And that, yeah, I, I was in awe. I couldn't believe it was even the first quarter. Not a conference championship not a New York State championship, not a regional championship, and not that those don't matter. But to rise to a national, I mean, so few people ever in the world can say that they're a national champion. You come to LeMoyne, you hoist up the trophy, you are the nation's best team in a pandemic on top of that. You can take that with you forever. What When I say Frankie Delia, the national champion. What, what, are, what's going through you when I say that? I mean, it, you know, I, I personally have worked hard to, to get where I'm at in my life, and, and I've worked hard on lacrosse to make sure that I'm uh, the starting goalie and, and on a on a good team. But really, I couldn't have done it without the people around me, starting from my youth with Jimmy Delia, my parents, my brothers, uh, my brother Nikki and his friend Davey, and my other brother Joey shooting on me when I was seven years old made it huge impact on my success and uh, but you know really I, I couldn't have done it without the people around me starting from a youth and then getting to college and, and my teammates and my defense that I have in front of me got the best defense in the world and, and my coaches and everything so when you say that I don't, I don't personally think about me and my accomplishments I think about everyone else around me and how they've helped me get to this position where I'm at. Very humble answer and I like it. Right before rapid fire I asked Dan Sheehan to describe you. Oh, describe him. Lovable. He said you're lovable. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. He, he's tough, but that's what you want. That's what you want. I mean, that's why we're in the position that we're in. So, But he, he on the field, he's tough. Outside the field, he's the first person to crank up a conversation and, and uh, you know, just ask you how life's going and everything. So. All right. Fair enough. Wake up call with Dan Satora, Pizza Man Pub. You're watching on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. And of course on YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. I want to close this out with rapid fire as we've done with Dan Sheehan and Nate Arnold. Three questions apiece. And this gentleman, Frankie Delia, national champion of Lemoyne, he gets to ask me first. Go ahead. Um, is cereal a soup? No. Yes, it is. It's not a soup. You it's don't, definitely a soup. You don't put milk in soup. It doesn't matter. You don't put... <laughs> it's a soup. It's, it's milk and it's ingredients. It's a soup. It looks like soup, but it's milk. There's an argument to be made on the yeah, other side, but it's my, my argument's definitely more right than the other side. Okay. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Okay, so... All right, let's go. Let's go for argument's sake. 
you're running for president of the United States. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan Sheehan says he's going to put a sign on his front lawn. What is your tagline? What is your motto as you run for president? I don't know. <laughs> Life, uh, I'd have to go with uh, Life's a Garden, Dig It. Life's a Garden, Dig It. Okay. That's my motto. And what's the deeper meaning? Uh, it's just Joe Dirt. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Joe, that's Dirt. it. Joe Dirt. Dirt. It's just Joe Dirt. Life's a Garden, you gotta dig it. Keep on keeping on, never have no in your heart. Probably put that whole thing on there, that'd be perfect. Okay, alright. And you'd have to have a mullet too. I would, I would rock them all. I think that would give me more votes, honestly, if, if I were to rock people. Yeah, I think that this, I, listen, I've seen people, I've seen people in central New York with a mullet. They say it's down south, but I just witnessed somebody last weekend rocking a very old school mullet. It's cool, man. It's right here. You can grow one. I don't want to. We'll do it together. <laughs> <laughs> if we did it together, I would do it. All right. All right. We'll, Make yeah. a pact. Okay. Fair enough. All right. all right, Frankie, what's your second one? I've never had asked, anybody ask me to grow a mullet with them before. So, it's a new one. <laughs> um, all right, well, I guess my, my second question is, if peanut butter wasn't called peanut butter, what would you call it? If it wasn't called peanut butter, what would I call it? I would call it peanut spread. That's it. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Pretty anticlimactic. Right, what do you want me to call it? I don't know. That's why I asked you. Now, I call it... A brown butter? Brown butter. Brown butter. Maybe. You could sell brown butter. Yeah. Well, you're just taking, but you just took peanut and butter. I know. Well, what do you want me to call her? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I call it. I'm asking you. All right. What? Okay, so you're making, you're making a peanut butter sandwich. Do you do peanut butter and fluff? If people don't know what a fluff or not is, you need to, like, get to know life. Yeah. But do you do peanut butter and fluff, peanut butter and jelly, why one over the other, and what jelly if you use jelly? Well, if I had to choose one or the other, it's, it's peanut butter and jelly. But if I had to not choose, it would be both of them. I'd do like a triple decker type. type okay. Thing. What type of jelly? Uh, probably grape. I'm a bit grape jelly fan. All right. I'm strawberry. No. Oh, yeah, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, Frank, you want your last one for me? Um, if you were arrested. Oh, cool. And, uh, which, you know, who knows? Who knows? Um, if you were arrested, what would your family and friends think that you were arrested for? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Jim Delia. <laughs> oh, Jim Delia. Don't put it So. <laughs> he has no filter. He you know that. No, he has no filter at all. No filter. What would I be? What, do, what would my loved ones think I'm arrested for? Yeah. You know, I think my mom would honestly say that she'd put nothing past me. It'd be something funny. It would be a prank. Yeah. It would never be something violent. Like It'd be something funny. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably in decent exposure somewhere. Right. I'd probably be <laughs> running, running somewhere on a beach somewhere. <laughs> on a beach. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or, or you know, or I just, I don't know. I mean, my comedy, I can, I can go places in my comedy. I'd probably get myself in trouble. Something like that. Maybe maybe say something at like a presidential party. Oh, yeah. You know? Secret service. Yeah. My yeah. secret service, because I'm running for president now. Yes, yeah. your secret service. Don't more. arrest me. No, <laughs> I'll get you off. I'll pardon you. <laughs> yeah, pardon me. Pardon me when you pardon the turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know what? I like your question, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kind of use it, but I'm not going to use it exactly. Okay. You're in jail. You come up on parole. And the judge says, tell me three things to let you out of prison. Well, listen, you know, I'm just the best there ever was. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I pee excellence. That's what I would say. <laughs> okay. Is this uh, Joe Dirt again? No, that's, 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 that's Ricky Bobby. That's Ricky Bobby. Oh, that is Ricky Bobby. I forgot about that. What are the three things you would say to the judge? Well, that's one. Uh, the second one would be I'd probably show him my awesome mullet, because I'd imagine at this point I'd have the mullet growing out by now. Okay. And I'd say, how are you going to leave me in jail with a sweet mullet when nobody's seeing it? Okay. Um, and then third would be that I'm a national champion. Yeah. That's right. The, the, the last one was okay. But, no, it was perfect. But that's 100% of you would still be in jail. 
Yeah, no, definitely. If I if I walked in with that, they'd, they'd probably be like, well, you're in for life. If you walked in with a mullet, they would just send you right back. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I don't know how you're going to rock it. So with that being said, I've never ended a show talking about jail, but Frankie Delia made it interesting today. So Frankie Delia, 2021 national champion, Lemoyne College Dolphins men's lacrosse. The Champions Corner is here at Pizza Man Pub, 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville, New York. For Wake Up Call with Dan Tatora, we will see you here every single month. And you know here on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT, YouTube, MixLR, and on WakeUpCallDT.com. You can watch us Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And you can go right down the road here in central and upstate New York and support your Lemoyne College Dolphins men's lacrosse and all sports. Frankie, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.